Hey there Arconiacs, we've got a review and breakdown of Only Murders in the Building Season 3 Episode 4, The White Room. Now I love this episode and I think it's a good mix of the story of the play and weaving in and out how the podcast is put on the back burner because of Death Rattle Dazzle by Charles and Oliver who's they're just more focused on that right now. First I have to give myself a little congratulations for correctly guessing that the lipstick on the mirror did in fact belong to Joy. But what may seem a little confusing is the message left on the mirror. A note calling Ben a pig with an expletive before that. Now I don't think Joy wrote this nor do I think someone else went to his dressing room after her and left this salacious note. Last episode through Tolbert's footage, we know that Ben was talking to someone or something about how it's sweet and will ruin his career. I myself and I'm sure a lot of other people believe that he was talking to a plate of cookies. And with this information about a blotch on his face, I think whatever was in these cookies is what gave him that little rash. I did notice the red blotch on his face, but then after going back, I did see it while he went into Oliver's apartment after he came back from the hospital, and it seems like it could have possibly been a allergic action to something. But as told by Kimber, Ben sees this blotch on his face, he then calls Joy to cover up this blemish, and after she leaves, I believe Ben looks at himself in the mirror and self-effacingly calls himself an effing pig. And this would make sense, as he's supposed to stick to this diet and not eat cookies and he's doing all these things that he shouldn't. It's very common for people to write notes to themselves on mirrors and Ben with his self esteem issues, I believe that this would make the most sense. What was in his cookies? Well, I'm not sure, but there is a possibility that Kimber is the guilty party and if she is, it may not have been on purpose. Kimball may have made him cookies as an attempt to get him to reconsider supporting her anti-aging serum. In this episode, we've seen that she is one to make some elixirs. She concocted this anti-aging cream, even though I believe she said it was Vaseline and club soda, and she was trying to get Mabel to eat some kibble. I don't know what else she mixed in there, but also on her desk, there was a package of something called Liquid Venom, also an anti-aging agent. The name of it is a bit of a call to Ben and his character of Cobro, so she could have mixed something in there thinking it would be helpful, but actually giving Ben something that he's allergic to, causing the decoloration of his face. Also on her desk was a bag of popcorn with the label lesser evil and i think that this is an attempt to say she did not intend to murder him but i could be reading too far into it now if we go back to the trailer we know that oliver will go back into ben's dressing room and wipe away the note on the mirror it is also a possibility that after his date with loretta when he finds her scrapbook of ben he will assume that she wrote that on his mirror and wipe it away as a means to save his play. We know that he doesn't want anyone in the play that is important to have a part in this possible murder. But it looks like he could become conflicted in his actions and what he will do to protect his baby. Slightly mirroring Loretta's speech in the first episode. I will add that there was a poster for a solemn yay I believe that's how it's pronounced, in Ben's dressing room, and Loretta was seen highlighting lines from it in the opening of the first episode also. Though I don't think Loretta is the guilty party, it does kind of lend to the idea that she is guilty of something. Another plot point that seems to be come along is the podcast being bought by Cinda. I theorize that Mabel has been shown to be the driving force of the podcast this season as a means for her to be the podcast producer going forward. And at the beginning of this episode, Mabel was looking at apartments and a realtor told Mabel that she should focus on something that she loves. And I think that thing is solving murders. 
in the end, I think it will be Cinda making a deal to be the parent company to only murders in the building. And with this big case, the murder of Ben Glenroy, Mabel will be able to get that extra zero as payment and in turn afford to live in the Arconia, likely the penthouse. Even though I personally wish she could just get another apartment and we can keep getting someone rotated in and out. I found Charles Fugue states that he goes into uh, the white room, a very hilarious bit. I didn't mind the cursing and I thought it was a nice segue into keeping the play in the story and unraveling what we figured out about Joy. Joy is a very fun character and I don't think she's ever been a danger to Ben physically, but this could be dangerous to Charles who unbeknownst to himself asked himself to marry her. I thought it was a little odd when Oliver told Charles that he always finds the words because last season he couldn't find the words to break up with Jen. So I think this would be something really hard for Charles to do. And in the end, I think he'll get over his issues and wind up being okay with getting married. I think they're slowly creeping on working on a closing of the series. Not that it will happen this season or next season, but it will end with Charles marrying Joy, probably retiring because he doesn't need to work. I'm hoping that Oliver will also retire because he has his heart problems and maybe they will continue working on the podcast with Mabel. If not, she could go off and do something herself. But my biggest thing is that Moses Morris name appears again. And Howard specifically states that he fixes things for him. Now, I, I'm telling you, writing with the whole insurance thing, I, I don't like it. Something is telling me there's something fishy going on here. Insurance, very sketchy stuff. This guy is a fixer. It's giving me mob mentality stuff, even though I can't imagine State Farm like uh, someone stated, I can't remember who it was, that they would not have themselves as a bad guy in the story. I don't think they would, but there's definitely something specifically fishing going on here. And I'm hoping that we will get more information on that in the long run. Maybe Moses fixed Ben, who knows? But either way, those are my thoughts on this week's episode. Please share yours below, and if you could, give a like to the video. Live streaming didn't work out as well as I hoped, but I think I figured it out, and next week we'll try to do a watch along again. And as always, my name is Dallas, thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you on the rooftop.